Hello students, myself is Puneet from Prab Kirpa classes. Today we are going to learn about an other important topic of IT that is database management system. In this course we will learn question number one, what is the difference between data and information? Second, what is meant by database? Third, databases can be classified into two types. What are those types? Discuss. Question number 4. What is DBMS? Question number 5. DBMS is used for various business activities. Give examples. Or what are the applications of DBMS? Question number 6. What are the various advantages of database or DBMS? Question number 7. What is the meaning of data redundancy? Next, what is meant by data consistency? Question number 9. What are the various disadvantages of DBMS? Question number 10. What are the various components of DBMS? Question number 11. What is the meaning of database servers? Next, what is meant by RDBMS? 13. What are the advantages of relational database? Question number 14. What is the meaning of item, second record, third field, then fourth value? Question number 15. What are the key features of a database? Question number 16. What is meant by DML, SQL and DTL? Next, what is the meaning of primary key and foreign key? Next, what is the meaning of composite primary key? Before proceeding further, let us understand the meaning of data. Data refers to raw facts and or figures. Data is an unsystematic fact or detail about something. The term data is derived from the Latin word datum, which means something given, a given or something that should be taken into consideration. Plural of datum is data. The dictionary meaning of the word data is facts and statistics collected together for reference or analysis. Data alone has no certain meaning until and unless the data is explained and interpreted. It is just a collection of texts, numbers, words and symbols. For example, if you have something like this one, Rehana, $5,000, 9810012345, this can be considered as data. Another example, 0201198. This figure is data and does not provide any meaning. As already told that data is something which are raw facts or figures. It is just a collection of text or numbers, words or symbols from where we cannot come to any conclusion. In this example, you have seen that one represents nothing. It may be a serial number. It may be a roll number. It may be a count number. Next, 5,100 does not represent whether it is the school fees or it is the salary of an employee or these are other expenses. Further, this 9810012345, we are unable to understand whether, whether it is mobile number or it is the bank account number. In the same way, next example, we are unable to understand whether this is an account number or a code of a particular item where we cannot understand anything and it is only just figures or words which carry no meaning which will carry meaning if only they are interpreted properly these types of words or text are called data after having understood the meaning of data it is also important for us to understand the meaning of the word information when the data is processed and transformed in such a way that it becomes useful to the users, it is known as information. Information is a systematic and filtered form of data which is useful. It is free from unnecessary details or immaterial things. The raw data is analyzed and organized in desired context and only the necessary data is kept and the rest is discarded. 
The term information discovered from the Latin word informer, which means to inform. Information refers to the meaning data. In the above table, each and every value has some meaning. 1 stands for serial number. Rihanna is name. $5,000 is his salary per week. And 9810012345 is contact number. 0201198 is data, but if we write that date of birth, 2nd January 1984, it is information. Information is utilized in some significant way, such as to make decisions, forecast, etc. As already told, data are only raw facts or figures which do not convey us any particular information or they are not in a position to enable us to arrive at any decision whether in as already told in the previous slide we had seen that one did not represent anything we were unable to understand what the five thousand dollar means but here when we have assigned specific clarified this system that is one stands for serial number rihana stands for name and 5000 per dollar stands for salary per week. This raw data has now con been converted into information and only on the basis of the information we can take any decision. On the basis of data, we cannot take any decision or forecast. Now we will understand the difference between data and information. Data means raw facts gathered about someone or something. On the other hand, when the data is processed and transformed in such a way that it becomes useful to the users, it is known as information. Data is in unorganized form. It is randomly collected facts and figures. When data is organized, it becomes information. Information presents data in a better way. Data may or may not be useful. Information is always useful. With meaningful data, that is information and organization can take a decision. Data is not dependent on information. Information depends on data. If there is no data, there will be no information. You cannot make a decision based on the data. On the other hand, we can make a decision based on information. In the world of computers, data is the input or what you tell the computer to do or say. Information is the output or how the computer interprets your data and shows you the requested action or directive. Next, what is the meaning of database? A database is an organized collection of related data mostly stored electronically in a computer system. In a database, data is stored in a way that makes it easy to retrieve. We can consider a database as a container of information. Examples of databases are an address book, a telephone directory, student data, customer data, a timetable. Each database consists of one or more tables. Tables contain rows called records and columns called fields. Suppose you own a grocery store. You need to keep detailed records of the materials or items available in your shop. You also need to store information about prices of the items, balance stock levels for reordering, all stocks, the bills to be paid or collected, etc. Now, if you maintain all this data manually, you will have to maintain several files with different types of information. Also, retrieving data from these manual files is very difficult. However, with the computerized system, you can use database programs such as Microsoft SS, OpenOffice.org Base, and MySQL to organize the data as per your business need. Next, the use of computer-based database started to grow when the Direct access storage devices such as magnetic disks became available from the mid 1960s onwards. Computer based database can handle a large amount of different data. The database is a single large repository of data which can be used simultaneously by many departments and users. 
Database is store data or information in tables just like the one below. In this table, information is appearing in respect of two students who have not paid the school tuition fees. Now we discuss classification of databases. Databases are of various types, but as per our level of study, that is class 10, databases can be classified into two types. Number one, flat file database. The database that stores all of its data in one table only is called flat file database. This form of database is suitable only when the size of data is small. The patient database is an example of a flat file as all of the information is stored in one single table. You will find from the single table what is the room number allotted to a particular patient, what is the name of the doctor which is treating a particular patient etc. Second, relational database. The relational database does not store all the data in one table. The relational database stores data in multiple tables which are linked together. Relational databases are used for medium to large amount of data. Relational databases have tables that are related to each other by common fields. Once the tables are linked together, each one can read the data from the other. It is the most common type of database. A sample of relational database comprising of three tables is shown here. Customer table shows customer ID, customer name, customer address. Account number, ta account number table shows the balance in the particular account number. Depositor table shows account number against the particular customer ID. We have already uploaded many courses on various important topics such as past tense, present tense, future tense, most common mistakes in English grammar, web applications, internet, computer virus, spreadsheet, etc. You can watch the same on our website pratkirpaclasses.com. Now we come to the important term database management system. A database management system is specialized software that helps the user to interact with the database. It allows the user to insert, delete, update or retrieve the data. DBMS provides control access to the data. It is a computer based record keeping system. It is important to note that the DBMS allows different user application programs to concurrently access the same database. DBMS is an intermediate layer between programs and the data. Programs assess the DBMS which then assesses the data. Examples of the popular database management systems are Oracle Database, Microsoft SQL Server, Microsoft Access and MySQL. In the figure, you can see that there are three different officers working in an office while payroll officer requires staff related details. Customer service officer needs access to customer accounts. Sales manager needs access to stock related details. DBMS helps all these officers to assess the database simultaneously for different types of information. Features of DBMS DBMS supports multi-user environment that allows user to assess and manipulate data in parallel. DBMS removes data redundancy. DBMS allows sharing of data. DBMS has the facility to limit the permissions of the users. DBMS versus flat file. DBMS supports multi-user assess. Flat file does not support multi-user access. DBMS removes redundancy. In case of flat file, redundancy issues are there. DBMS is expensive. In the long run, DBMS proves its worth. Flat file is cheaper. Use of database or DBMS for business activities or applications of DBMS. 
There are a few areas where some organizations use databases for their business activities in their day-to-day -day life. Banks use DBMS to manage customer information, banking transactions, loans, etc. Airlines use database to store customer details, flight timings, bookings, etc. Universities use DBMS to store students' profile, course registrations, and grades. Telecom companies use DBMS to keep a record of the customers' calls, made, bills, etc. Organizations use DBMS to store information about employees, their salaries, taxes, etc. Railway uses DBMS for reservations and schedule information. E-commerce companies use database to store information about employees, flyers, products, sales, etc. Next, advantages of database or DBMS. Databases are used to organize, store and retrieve information as efficiently and effectively as possible. Database offers following advantages. Number one, reduces data redundancy. Number two, facilitates sharing of data. Third, data integrity. Fourth, ensure, ensures data security. Fifth, privacy. Sixth, backup and recovery. Seventh, data consistency. Eighth, data is assessed more quickly. Ninth, improve data quality. Tenth, ensures that all information is complete, relevant and timely. Now we discuss each point one by one. Number one, reduces data redundancy. In DBMS, the data redundancy can be controlled or reduced, but it not removed completely. Data redundancy means the duplication of data. Sometimes it is necessary to create duplicate copies of the same data items in order to relate table with each other. The given table shows data redundancy. Try to find out the duplication of data in the given table at your level. Yes, you have found out the duplicate data. The data in respect of Ramesh is appearing twice. Number two, facilitates sharing of data. The data stored in the database can be shared among multiple users. Many users can access the database simultaneously. Third, data integration. In DBMS, data in database is stored in tables. A single database contains multiple tables and relationships can be created between tables. This makes it easy to retrieve and update data. Fourth, ensures data security. It is the protection of the database from unauthorized users. Only authorized users are allowed to access the database and their identity is authenticated using a username and password. Fifth, data consistency. Data consistency means that all the data appears consistently across the database and must be the same for all the users viewing the database. Moreover, any changes made to the database are immediately reflected to all the users and there is no data inconsistency. The table given here shows an example of data inconsistency. Please try to find out the data inconsistency in the table at your level. You might have noticed that in one of the rows, it is written that Ramesh has not paid fees, while in some other row, it is shown that Ramesh had paid the fees. Such type of data inconsistency is not there in case of DBMS. Privacy. It is most important rule in database. It means that only authorized users can assess the database according to its privacy constraints. To secure data, levels are set in the database and the user can only view the data which is allowed to be seen. For example, in social networking sites, assess constraints are different for different accounts. Seventh, backup and recovery. DBMS automatically takes care of backup and recovery. 8. Data is assessed more quickly. 9. Improved data quality. 10. Ensures that all information is complete, accurate, relevant and timely. 
Disadvantages of DBMS. DBMS has plenty of advantages, but it has certain flaws as well. Number one, high cost of hardware and software. Number two, requirement of trained staff to use DBMS. Third, increased vulnerability because in some organizations, all data is integrated into a single database which can be damaged because of electric failure or database is corrupted on the storage media. Fourth, DBMS can't perform sophisticated calculations. When not to use a DBMS system, we should not use DBMS system when we do not have the budget or the expertise to operate a DBMS. In such cases, Excel or flat files may be used. Components of DBMS Number 1. Software It is a set of programs that lies between the stored data and the users of database. In other words, software interacts with the user application programs and database and file system of a particular storage media to insert, update, delete and retrieve data. Software includes a database, software, operating system and network software. Number 2. Hardware all the physical electronic devices such as computers, storage devices like hard disk and input-output devices like monitor, keyboard, printer, etc. are called hardware. Hardware can be costly depending on the configuration. The maintenance cost of hardware is also high. Third, data. It is the most important component of the DBMS. The main purpose of DBMS is to process the data. Most of the organization generate, store and process large amount of data. Database con contains both the actual or operational data and the metadata, data about data or description about data. Fourth, users. There are three kinds of people who play different roles in database system. Number one, application programmer or designers. This user group is involved in developing and designing the parts of DBMS. Number two, database administrators. DBA is responsible for administrating the database. He is responsible to look after by whom database should be used and how much access is to be given to whom. We may be asked in the examination what is the meaning of DBA. Third, end users. End users are the persons who interact with the DBMS. They conduct various operations on database like retrieving, updating, deleting, etc. Next, procedures. Procedures refer to the rules and instructions that help us to design the database and how to use the DBMS. This includes procedures to log in and log out of DBMS software to manage databases, to take backups, generating reports, etc. Six, database access language. Database access language is a language designed to write commands to access, insert, update, and delete data stored in any database. Next, database servers. Database servers are dedicated computers that hold the actual databases and run only the DBMS and related software. The data is assessed from the database servers using client-server model. In this model, the database server acts backend and the other computers that assess the data from the server are called frontends. Data is assessed from the server using command line or graphic user interface tools. RDBMS RDBMS is the most popular database management system. It was developed by E.F. Foote, an English computer scientist at IBM in 1970. It is a type of database management system in which data is organized in the form of interlinked tables. These tables are called relations. Forum key is used to create a relationship between any two tables of RDBMS. A foreign key is simply the primary key in a different table. Tables communicate and share information which facilitates data searchability, organization and reporting. Relational database management systems use the language known as SQL, Structured Query Language. 
which is pronounced as actual or sometimes as SQL. SQL is a simple programming language used for assessing and managing data in relational databases. An important feature of relational database system is that a single database can be spread across several tables. Oracle Database, MySQL, Microsoft SQL Server, and IBM DB2, etc. are the examples of RDBMS. In a relational database, Rows are also called records or tuples. Columns are also called attributes. The user of the relational database system may insert new tuples, delete tuples and modify tuples. The primary keys within a database are used to define the relationships among the tables. When a PK migrates to another table, it becomes a foreign key in the other table. Advantages of RDBMS or Relational Database Number 1. Storing of data at one place only. It simplifies the deletion or modification of data. Data inconsistencies are avoided. Number 2. Reduces data redundancy. Data redundancy means that duplication of data. Third, Relational Database allows to deal with larger data sets easily. Fourth, ability to share data with other relational databases easily and readily. Fifth, ease of data extraction. Sixth, better backup and recovery procedures. Seventh, better security. By splitting data into tables, certain tables can be made confidential and their access can be restricted to the selected users only. Important terms related to database management system. Data Manipulation Languages This is a programming language used to insert or modify the data present in a database. There are of two types, SQL and DDL, Structured Query Language, a programming language generally used for the relational database management system which comprises tables. Data Definition Language it is a syntax which helps in modifying data present in the form of tables or indexes. It is important for us to understand the meaning of syntax. Each spoken language has a general set of rules for how words and sentences should be structured. These rules are collectively known as the language syntax. In computer programming, syntax serves the same purpose. Syntax in computer programming means the rules that control the structure of symbols, punctuations and words of a programming language. Primary key and foreign key. A primary key is a unique value that identifies a row or record in a table or database or every single record in a database has something to uniquely identify it and this is called the primary key or sometimes the key field. One column in each table acts as a primary key. Relational databases use primary keys to connect records from one table to other tables. For example, employee ID is the primary key of the employee table. When you got admission in school, you were given the student ID primary key. When a patient admits in the hospital, he is given a patient number primary key. This means that any treatment can be recorded on his record and he will be given the right medicines. A primary key cannot allow null values. It allows numbers and text both. As already told that primary key is a unique value that identifies a row or record in a table or database. Suppose there are 1000 students in a school. The students may be having similar names. There may be two or three or more students having this similar name. And in case we want to identify which student has not paid the fees. And if we point out that suppose there are three Jones in a school. And if we point out that John has not paid the fees, it will be very difficult for us to identify we are to whom 
from whom we are to get the fees so in order to solve this problem student are given student id this is the primary key each student is given a different student id so that the same becomes a unique record at the same time it must also be remembered that the primary key cannot allow null values it means that we cannot allow zero in case of a primary key as already told that primary if we want that a student id is zero it means nothing it should be either in number or in text it may be roll number may be in one two three or in case of other implied id it may be a b c one two three just like that it may be a combination of both or it may be only numbers or text but it cannot be zero when primary key is made up of two or more columns then it is called composite primary key or compound key as you can see in this figure that two fields that is name and address both these keys have been joined together to make the composite primary key these two keys have been combined together and it becomes a primary key in this figure you have seen that we have combined these two columns so that we can make the composite primary key next foreign key when a primary key from one table is used in second table to locate or look up records from the first table it is called a foreign key the relationship between two tables is established with the help of foreign key a table may have multiple foreign keys and each foreign key can have a different referenced table for example course id column of student table works as a foreign key as well as a primary key for course table here you can see two tables student table and course table in the course table course id is the primary key but in the student table it is appearing as foreign key in a table there can be only one primary key number of foreign keys can be more than one suppose there is another table called teacher table in that table suppose we have allotted teacher id and teacher name suppose teacher id is 001 then 002 it is the primary key teacher id is the primary key in case of the teacher table but if we add here another column that is the teacher id it becomes another foreign key so in any given table only one primary key can be there but there can be more than one foreign key in any given table but for primary key will remain only one it is to be also noted that a primary key can be used in more than one table as foreign key the table containing the foreign key this is the foreign key here has been used it's always the child table it will be treated as child table where the foreign key is there the main table from where the foreign key has been taken it will be the called parent table the table child that provides the primary key is always the parent table this can be memorized as one parent pk many child fk foreign key database concepts mukesh works in a marketing department of a company he joined the company on 1st feb 2020 his employee id is 567 and his contact number is 12345678 the information can be stored in the table as shown below in this table mukesh is an item item is about which information is stored in the database now we gather the information in respect of other employees and store it in the above table we may get a complete table in the table below 
all of the information about each employee is stored in a row or record. Here in this table, you can see that there are many employees in respect of whom the information has been stored and each employee is called an item and this complete is called a table. This table consists of five columns, one, two, three, four, five. In the same way, the first, the, there are five rows where the debt, data has been entered. This is the table where there are rows and columns. The top row, this is the top row where employee ID, employee name and joining date are mentioned. It, this top row is the reserved for what for what? These are reserved for field names. All these are field names. There are five fields. One, this employee ID, employee name. These are field names. So in a table, the top row is always reserved for field names. Next. In this table, each row represents a set of related data. Record is all of the data or information about one person or one entity or one thing. Each row or record in the table has the same structure. In database terminology, each row is called a record. Record of a table is also known as tuple. Here, each record has five fields. Record is the related information which is separated by columns or fields. In this table, you can see that there are five records or five rows. These are the rows. One, two, three, four, five. These are five rows. Six. Okay. All these rows are also known as tuples or records. In case of a table, the information is separated by each other by columns. These are the rows and the information is divided by columns. These are the columns. This is a one record, five, six, seven, Mukesh. This is the employee name. This is the joining. This is the one record which we have shown here. This is first line. In the same way, four, three, two, Shelly, this is will become the complete line. Complete row will become the second record. In this table, as already told, we have shown only five, uh, five rows and there are also five fields. Next. A field is one piece of data or information about a person or thing. Each question that we ask about our item is a field. Each piece of information in a record is called a field. A field corresponds to a column in the table. A field is also called an attribute. A field contains all the same type of data. Here in this table, you can see that in this table, there are five fields as already as has been clarified in this picture. These are the five fields. Fields are also known as columns or these are also known as attributes. If we come to a particular field, here, imply name, all these fields are showing only the names of the persons who have been implied by the company. If we come to this third field, joining date, then this field only shows the joining dates and not the any other information such as name or ID. In the case of contact number, this field, only contact numbers are mentioned. So, we may be asked that what type of information is there, whether there is dissimilar information in a particular field, we will say no. Similar type of information is provided by any one particular field. A value is the actual text or numerical amount of data that you put in while adding information to your database. For example, the content in each of the cells shown below is a value. When we fill all the cells with the information, it forms a collection of records. In case of first row, we have added 5, 6, 7 in case of employee ID. So this is the value. In case of suppose, in case of the other second row, in, we have mentioned the name as Shelly. This is also a value. In case of third row, we have added 
joining date this is also a value all the figures which we put in a particular column or a particular here in a, any particular column a particular cell information which we put or enter in a particular cell is known as value key features of a database there are some key features of a database number one a database can have one or many tables an address book is a very simple example usually in real life the databases are complex and they consist of more than one tables the database of a big company would have many tables table of products details table of customers details table of suppliers details table of orders details table of employee details and many others next second each table in the database has information about one particular item the complete database of the company acts like a container of information customer table provides information about the customers of the company the information in respect of employees is available in the employee table Supplier table provides information in respect of suppliers of the company. Next, third, another important feature of a, every table in the database is uniqueness of the record. When we put in information, we may have people with the same name. Consider the following example. Now, it is difficult for us to find whether there are two students with the name Rajesh or there is some error in feeding information. So, let us understand how can we differentiate between the duplicate records and make each record unique. Duplication of records can be avoided by using some number or value that uniquely identifies a record. If such a unique value does not exist in any field, the database designer has to create a special additional field in a table where unique value can be assigned for each new entry. Such a field is called a key field. It ensures that all the records including having identical names or other values are unique. In other words, each table in the database must have a key field which ensures that all the records are unique throughout the database. Now see the difference between table 1 and table 2. In case of table 1, we were not able to understand whether there are two students having the same name that is Rajesh or there is some clerical error in feeding data. So to avoid duplication of records and to make each record unique, we have added one additional field registration number in case of table 2. Now the position is clear that there are two different students with the same name as registration number is different in both the cases. Working of a database. A database is an organized collection of related data mostly stored electronically in a computer system. It does not keep the separate copies of a particular data file. Still a number of users can access the same data at the same time. As shown in the diagram, DBMS works as an interface between the user and the centralized database. Firstly, a Quest or query is forwarded to DBMS which works on the received query with the available data that is a searching process is started on the centralized database and if the result is obtained it is forwarded to the user. If the output does not completely fulfill the requirements of the user then a rollback again search is done and again search process is performed until the desired output is obtained. Recap. Data means raw facts gathered about someone or something. When the data is processed and transformed in such a way that it becomes useful to the users, it is known as information. A database is an organized collection of related data mostly stored electronically in a computer system. Relational database stores data in multiple tables which are linked together. Database management system is specialized software that helps the user to interact with the database. Components of DBMS are 
software, hardware, data, user processes, and database access language. RDBMS is the most popular database management system in which data is organized in the form of interlinked tables. The relationship between any two tables is created by the use of foreign key. A primary key cannot allow null values. A primary key can be used in more than one table as a foreign key. The end users of the database do not have direct access to the database. They can only see and act according to what the database administrator permits them. So far, we have read the whole course and now it is the time to do practice. Choose the correct option. Which of the following is not the advantage of database? First is sharing of data. Database allows sharing of data. This is correct because suppose there are three persons A, B and C and this is the DBMS and this is the database. So all these three persons get the same data from database with the help of DBMS and there is sharing of data between these three persons. All these three persons can assess the same data at the same time. So there is sharing of data. This is the advantage. Next increases data inconsistency. Database increases data inconsistency. inconsistency? No, it is not correct because in case of database, suppose there are three persons which act as cashier in a school, they are receiving the fees from tuition fees from the students. If a person receives the fees, the same is updated immediately and the same is reflected in the database and every person on the computer and having access to the database will get to know that Ramesh has paid the fees. So their chances of data inconsistency are reduced. So this is wrong. Database does not increase data inconsistency, rather it decreases. So this is not the advantage. On the other hand, database reduces data redundancy. Data redundancy means duplicacy of data. It reduces the chances of data duplicacy. This is the correct. It is the advantage of database that it also ensures data security. Data security means that a person can access the database only when he has the username as well as the password. So in conclusion, we can say that increase in data inconsistency is not the advantage of database dash a dash is the actual text or numerical amount or date that you put in by adding information to your database as you know that database consists of tables suppose this is the table here we put employee id here we put employee name here we put employee address here we are to mention id here we are to mention name here we are to mention address so what we add here is the value so answer is value record is what this is all called all the row is called record Data is all the data which we have mentioned, ID, name, values, all this is called data. Entry is anything which we enter. Suppose a simple item is entered in any form, it is called entry. So it, for the purpose of DBMS, it is called value. RDBMS is based on the relational model which was introduced by EF code. All the values in dash are of same type. As you have seen that in case of imply ID, imply name and imply address, only one type of information is shown in any one particular column. In case of ID, only ID is there. It may be 001, 002, 
in case of name it may be a b c or d so all these are all fields or columns here all type of information which is being reflected in a one particular column or field is of the same type this type of column will show only addresses of the particular person it will tell us the name of the particular person it will tell us the name of the particular it, it will tell us the id of the particular student or employee so all the information in this type of in any one type of column or field is of same type so answer is all the values in fields are of the same type which of the following help to maintain unique record in the field suppose there are hundred of students in a particular school if we maintain the data only on the basis of names there may be more than one student having the same name suppose john there may be many students having the same name john so it becomes necessary for us or the school to allot a particular value to each student that is the registration number or student id so that each student can be easily recognized different from other so if there are two jones they may be having different ids it may be 001 002 or 006 anything so this is the employee or student id so it or registration number this is the primary key or it can also be called key field so primary key helps to maintain unique record in the table so if we want to find any one particular student on employee so it will be easily for us to identify the same on the basis of primary key suppose next a foreign key is a, a reference of dash key in another table it can be understood with the help of an another example suppose it is a one table where we have mentioned student id student name and student address or students class the same student goes to school library this is the record of this is the student table the same student goes to the school library this is library table here the books have been maintained book id book name and the next column is student id so if a person goes there and he is given given a book ab then suppose this person gets the book here it will be get entered 01 so this is the main table where the id has been allotted to the students this is the primary key when this primary key is taken to another table for the purpose of reference it is the foreign key a foreign key is a reference of primary key here you can find that foreign key is the reference of the primary key in another table next misuse of database can be categorized as confidentiality integrity accidental or intentional it can also be understood with the help of an example suppose we are having two concerns sister concerns a person sends we send the data of our suppliers to our sister concern through an email through an oversight we have sent the email to a wrong address and that person has misused the data so it can be classified as misuse of database so it has happened through an oversight or it is called accidental misuse of database we have wrongly sent and this has been misutilized 
so this is the accidental misuse of database there was no intention on our part to misuse the database on the other hand if there is an employee who is having some wrong intentions in his mind he misuses the data for money or for on account of any revenge with the organization this is called intentional so misuse of data can be either intentional or accidental so this is the answer a database stores and processes data in the form of as you know that a database consists of a large number of tables it can be a product table employee table supplier table customer table and much more so a database stores and processes data in the form of tables next ninth dash are collection of different types of information about the same subject suppose we are having this table this is the employee table here we are having all the information in respect of implies so dash is the collection of different types of information about the same subject this is a record this which we enter in a particular row different type of information about the same subject it may be a one particular implied different type of information may be what is his id what is his name where he lives what is his salary so answer is different type of information about the same subject is records which of the following is not an example of database employee payroll management system customer management system answer is numeric calculator numeric calculator is used to calculate the numeric numbers only customer management system may be used for the purpose of customer to find out the customers or employee payroll may be used to find out which employee gets which uh, how much salary and in which department he is working what is his employee id and so on so our answer is that numeric calculator is not an example of database data is stored in rdbms in the form of tables relational database management system stores data in the form of relation as we know that relations are also known as table next all the information about a thing or a person is known as if this is the table we have suppose this is the student table here we have assigned student id here we have given his name here we have mentioned class so all the information about the thing suppose this is a one particular person suppose this is a person this is b person so all the inf information in respect of a is mentioned in a particular row all the information in respect of b is mentioned in next row so what is called row is called row is called record a record refers to a row of data which represents a complete set of information about a person or thing duplication of data is known as data redundancy data security means to secure the data incomplete data means suppose there is a dat table and we are to fill the values and we and many of the columns a cells remain blank so it is known as incomplete data so duplication of data means data redundancy a field in a table is also known as as already told if there are these are three three fields the, uh, you can see here clearly these are rows these are fields one two and three these are three fields employee id employee name employee 
club a department these are three fields a field in a table is also known as column it is also this field can is can also be known as column these are rows these are columns these are fields or columns these are columns or fields these are rows or these are also called records so our answer is a field in a table is also known as column in a database all the data are stored at a centralized location as already told if there are three persons abc they says the database with the help of dbms which is located centrally next a piece of data field value is stored in two places in a database then storage space is wasted and changing the data in one place will not cause data inconsistency this is false a table can have multiple primary keys false a table can have only one primary key if this is the student id this is called primary key if this student id is used in any other it is possible a table can have more than one foreign key but not more than one primary key primary key is only one in a table if we create multiple primary keys then the primary key will be unable to find unique key values next which of the following is not valid field of student suppose if we want to create student table we mention here student id or admission number here we mention his name here we mention his fees whether paid or not whether student is given any salary no student is not given any salary it is only given to employees so our answer is salary is not the valid field if you like our video, please like, share and subscribe our channel. Thank you.